And when we think about those data mining types of thought processes, we think about these new techniques of bringing in loads and loads and loads of data, regardless of structure, and being able to mine them for good information. A lot of that still follows that same application development thought process. I go out and create how I want to mine this data, and then I have to write the automation on the back end to automate the process. I can lift that off of their shoulders. In the case of Hadoop, just to pick one out of the, uh, out of the hopper here, where I actually have the ability to go out and say, I can go out and run your map reduces, I can run your Spark, I can run your disk CP, I can run your Hive, your Pig. All of these types of processes are all available as part of the integration of Control M. Taking the onus off of a uh, application developer who's using a Hadoop type of process to provide real-time data to an innovative IT application. Again, don't write so much. Worry about the quality of the upfront, and we'll take care of the automation on the back end. This is the kind of thing that we're talking about when we start thinking about the superpowering of applications. Taking the onus off of people's shoulders to write, write, write. Because you know what? When we think about all of those application developers that we hire, all of them are highly paid people. They're not, you know, 50 cent guys that you get off the street. They're people that are spending tons and tons of money to get high quality Java developers, Python developers, whoever it is, to write these front ends, to write these real time applications that are extremely innovative. They don't, we don't want them to spend so much time and so much cost with the industrialized piece of this. When we think about the DevOps piece, getting them to build the application automation, giving them an easy way to create that is something that Control-M provides using Workload Change Manager, a website where they can do the same things that we have been doing time in memoriam in creating workflow, but in a standardized way where I define the standards, where I create the rules, where I actually define the environments that they can have access to, give them the ability to see what objects they can use take away objects they shouldn't be using, have the ability to go out and only allow them to fill in certain fields in an object and not have them fill in others, and have the ability for them to submit that work to those that handle the automation discipline in the industrialized IT environment, and actually have all of that information come in to those folks on the uh, industrialized side in the right format following the right standards so that it becomes easy for them to implement the application in the industrialized side as well as the innovative side. The, again, thought process being promotion of collaboration, giving the ability for the DevOps person, the application developer, whoever it is, to create their flow and give it to the subject matter expert for its, its deployment in whatever environment is needed, and the ability to promote between environments. I need to move this individual application out of its testing mode into my production or from test to QA or whatever the steps are to move from a uh, a newly built application in a test mode to a properly uh, placed application in a production mode, all being done through Control-M. Yes, the jobs work in test. Now, how do I get them to QA? How do I get them to production? And can I do that without having to do so much heavy lifting? And I can set that up in Control-M as well as I can say, I'm going to move from test to production, and these are the rules that I want to use. These are the changes that need to be made for those jobs coming from test to QA to end up in the right environment in the right configuration. All of these things accelerate how we deploy our application. And it gives the continual collaboration between the groups so that there, this thought process of chafing between these innovative application developers and the industrialized IT goes away to a certain point. So let's talk about what Control-M looks like today. And we talk about it from the application standpoint. This is Control-M version 9. And when we think about Control-M version 9 and the objects that are available, there are many, many, many of them now. Not only from the ones that 
con- uh, that have been part of Control M for many many years, but also the ones that would be created by someone who had a third party application that wasn't an object here. They are all object oriented now. I don't have to think about what kind of job I'm going to deal with. I grab the right template and I go do something with it. This kind of thing is what helps streamline this process, not only for the industrialized automation person, but also for the application developer, because they recognize a Java object. They recognize an object for Informatica. They recognize an object that runs something in a database. These types of things are all now facilitated inside of Control-M. All of the objects that you see here were all created in that same way, and I have the ability to see and segment that application based on any kind of segmentation I wish, regardless of what types of things that I am doing. So in this case, I have a sample application out there, and I have the ability to see my distributed command jobs, my Informatica workload, my OS 400 workload, and I can segment it that way. If this was an innovative IT platform, I could actually say, this is my web service application. This is the portion of it that runs this uh, this specific set of transactions. This is one that reorganizes the database. The, those types of things are all segmentable as well. Regardless of what the mix is, regardless of what jobs I have working together, they all work together based on a predecessor-successor relationship. So I don't care that I am out here in WebSphere and I am looking for something in MQ series to come in and start off this process. And I can do that every single time. And it doesn't matter what the actual uh, bus is behind it. It could be JMS, it could be MQ, it could be any number of the ones that are supported for messaging. I can tie those things specifically to another process in the world. So I get that transaction. It comes in from my innovative IT application. It says, I need to run this process now because I have a certain amount of data that I need to process. And in this case, it's going to Informatica. And Informatica is going to do a a six, seven step process to go out and transform that data and place it in the appropriate formats that it needs to be placed into so that I can move on to the next step, which ends up being understanding where I am against an SLA to get that done. I also have other processes here, like working with ERPs in the case of SAP, working with individual workload that exists on other platforms, like command workload in the uh, in the distributed space, or even work that works on what we lovingly call the mainframe, or ZOS, or OS 390, or MVS, whatever you wish to call it. The truth is, I don't care what the technology is. I don't care what the the actual you know, process is to get the data from the industrialized IT to your innovative application, I can automate that whole process using Control-M. Every one of these objects looks the same. Every one of these objects works the same. There's no real difference between, for example, this M- uh, ZOS job and this MQ series job. The only thing that really changes is what I'm actually looking for. So in this case, in the MQ series job, I'm looking for a message called start demo. When I see it, I automatically set off the next process down the line. When I look at my ZOS job, I'm actually running a piece of JCL out there that says, go run this process out in the mainframe. And all of that can report back to an inventory, or in this case, inventory management SLA tracking, but any kind of SLA that you currently have. So let's say that the innovative IT says this process must be done within five minutes of the individual message come, uh, have it come in. I can go ahead and set that up and actually monitor it actively. Make sure that not only do I act, do I see that in my industrialized IT, but also have the ability for the innovative IT side to see that in a very easily consumable way, whether it's on the, a specific website, a phone, or a tablet. So this thought process of workload automation is not a a lost discipline. This is not a discipline that is you know, old and crusty and you know out in the back end and nobody's touching it. It actually is evolving. It's innovating not only to be industrialized and continue that industrialization, but also be innovative so that I can actually take the information that is here, 
mine it, and show it to somebody the way they need to see it. When we think about the execution of these things, these things all execute the same way. I still look at them the same way. If I look at it in the industrialized way, I can look at it based on their individual execution formats. I can see failures. I can see when my estimated start and end times are for all of these types of things. And all of this information is coming to me very, very quickly. I can homogenize that down also, where I can actually go out and see my individual uh, individual workflows, but orient them to the type of uh, service you're providing to the business. Is this payroll? Is this accounts payable? Is this some kind of real-time application? Uh, I think of one of our larger uh, transportation clients who actually uses Control-M to populate their uh, real-time web application for their, uh, their individual airline. All of these things are now shown to them this way. This is how your mileage is being updated. This is the partners sending over work. These are the transactions that are going on that Control-M is responding to based on requests from individual users or other applications or whatever it happens to be. And it's one of those things where I can homogenize it down to the individual types of work. So in this case, I have my Hadoop service out here. I have my demo flows. I have different types of individual applications that are running out here that do specific things. But ultimately, I know in one line what the problems are. I understand my SLA attainment. I understand where my problematic jobs are without having to look at any kind of structure. And I can present this to an application developer on the web, on the phone, on the tablet and not have to have them worry about having to come to the industrialized IT side and say, I need to know X. It's already available for them. And this kind of thing, for example, this DLE EBC briefing demo flow, again, homogenizing it down to a single line of information. I have a job failure. This is the estimated time for completion. Its deadline is 1615. I have two hours and 37 minutes before I have a material breach in my SLA. Here are my problematic jobs. The average completion time for this application as well. How many times have you asked yourself, am I going to meet my SLA? How often do I have to do that on my own, where I actually have to figure it out? I can have Control M give that information to me very, very quickly, just by creating one SLA. The thought process behind this superpowering of applications is not just the fact that I have the ability to give people the ability to create their automation, give people their own capability to create bridges between their individual applications and an industrialized IT structure. It's also the ability to tie everything together, to tie everything together and be able to show it to people and being able to give them good, useful information about how things are performing. Even things as simple as, this job should have finished 30 minutes ago, and it's running late. That simple thought process can be very powerfully given to anybody who needs to know, based on all the information that Control-M has and the functions that Control-M provides for the thought process of giving that application owner, that innovative application person, information that they need about what's going on.